Gary, thanks very much for joining us on another week of Borough TV. Port Melbourne travelled down to Chernside Park on the weekend and we got out with a 24 point win against quality opposition. You must be very thrilled with Sunday's performance. Yeah, I was Cam and obviously if you go back to season 2013 we had two games against Werribee down there and they spanked us both times by in excess of 10 goals so to be able to return there this year and get another away win I was very very pleased because it was a high quality game lots of pressure and I think that was probably evident by opportunities missed by both sides so to come away with a four goal win I think we've now won seven of our eight away games and the only game we lost was obviously a three point loss to Geelong at Simmons Stadium so to keep that form going is pretty important running into the finals. We got early goals through Bonner and Pinwell, but then we gave Werribee too much space and they got on top of us. Yeah, that's true. And I think we actually became a little bit one dimensional with our entries inside our forward 50. And at times we probably wasted that entry. And Werribee's defence is very good. They rebound a lot through there. They like to link up with handball. McMahon got a little bit of the ball. and. Sherlock's another one who will sort of swing between sort of half forward and half back and once we started doing that well that played into their hands a little bit and of course Ben Brown got on the end of a couple in their forward half and before you knew it we actually were behind on the scoreboard so probably quarter time came at a good time so we could actually regroup and I also thought we probably ball security was a little bit of an issue for us as well where we probably double handled the ball at certain times and of course against good opposition they'll counter attack from those stoppages and uh, certainly make you pay. Werribee seemed to pick their way through our zone defence early on. Was that a concern do you think? It was when they regained the momentum but I probably thought it was as much as what we were doing which enabled them to get their game going and once we actually had a chat about it a quarter time certainly that second quarter was high pressure and Tommy Langford actually chipped in with a couple of timely goals and we just were able to stem their ability to score quickly which we know Werribee can do and then we're able to get back on an even keel and uh, went in at half time with scores level so I think that was testament to the way both sides were playing and also to just the pressure of a match that was against two top sides this year. We played a strong second term having nine shots on goal. What were we doing different compared to the opening term? I think we're able to get some deeper entries mate and I think that's always important to put a lot of pressure on the opposition defence. I think we linked up better through the middle of the ground and also to our defence was playing really really well. Guys that have given us a bit of grief in the last couple of times, Ben Warren who didn't hit the scoreboard much at all and of course Adam Marrick's been in pretty good goal kicking form as well so I think the ability by Luke Tynan and also to Marcus Davies to negate those two guys certainly helped us a lot. But I think the fact that we made a little bit of an on-ground change too. Will Johnson went back into defence and Hugh Sanderlands went forward and started to hit up well. So I think it just gave us a little bit more of a mobile forward line in that second quarter with those changes. Although Werribee had scoring opportunities in the third, many were low percentage shots and we held them goalless. Yeah, we did. They ended up having seven shots on goal and of course we were able to have seven shots as well but it was three goals four to Norton seven and I think when they were actually trying to convert with their goal scoring opportunities they were reasonably wide so as you said they are low percentage areas of the ground and hopefully that's as much about the pressure that we were forcing on their ball carrier to actually get them to go out wide but at three quarter time we did have a little bit of momentum and I thought that was mainly due to the job that Jimmy Magna was doing on Jared Moore and also too Lockie Waddell really seized the moment at a I guess a couple of crucial times and uh, we're able to just get a little bit of breathing space going in the three quarter time. Well just on three quarter time we had a 15 point lead how confident were you that we we're going to finish strongly in the last quarter? Well, the way our fitness has been throughout the course of this year, I think you should really look at what gives you an opportunity and you've got to have confidence in the players' fitness and Rob Nicholson's doing a wonderful job with the guys and they're embracing what we're needing to do. And I just felt the momentum had certainly changed our way in a general sense. But look, confidence is an interesting thing. You think if you can apply what you know and do it extremely well, 
if you can stick to the, your structures and obviously your game plan and certainly the tactics on that day, you give yourself a chance. And I really thought we had a general play domination, but we weren't converting on the scoreboard and we just kept the door open a little bit for Werribee. And really there was a couple of things that some of our players did in the game, especially that last quarter, they probably contributed a little bit to allowing Werribee to get back in the game, but we knew that was going to be the case because they're a top four side and, of course, they're not going to give the game away. And even simple little execution misses by, say, Dan Connors when he ran into an open goal, and that would have possibly given us just an opportunity to be in a stronger position, but that wasn't the case, and we just enabled uh, Werribee just to get themselves back in the game. And, if not for probably young Lockie Waddell taking that mark in the goal square, I think that was when I felt confident and comfortable enough that we'd actually got the game in hand. There were many contributors on the day. Which players in your mind really stood out? Oh, the ones that we mentioned previously, Luke Tynan, Marcus Davies, even the whole defence too I thought was very, very good to restrict Werribee to nine goals only. The fact that young Lockie Waddell seems to just be growing in stature and confidence with every game that he plays, and that's a bonus for us because he's obviously out of our Oakley Chargers alignment. Certainly James Magna, I think, played his best game on Jared Moore, who's a, a star for Werribee, obviously. And I thought our team defence was very good yesterday, and certainly at times our ball movement to be able to hopefully put enormous pressure on Werribee's defence was positive so to come away with four goal win and certainly when we know the nature of the competition is extremely even we've just got to keep winning and get that winning form going into the finals. The boys look in excellent shape this year can you tell us a little bit about Rob and his fitness conditioning? Yeah well they say he actually resembles a little bit of a koala bear with his little whiskers and of course his long hair so well, I've got to put him back in the tree occasionally because he's on a diet of eucalyptus leaves. So we've got to make sure. Nah, look, Rob does a fantastic job. He's very experienced. He's got a sports science background. And what he applies to the guys is really a credit to both him and the boys because we only really train three times a week if we're lucky. So the ability to give them a maximum amount of training in a minimal time has certainly been a strength of Rob. And he works really well with the guys on an individual basis. Each players have a program. If they're stuck in rehab, you've got to be diligent about that. So the preparation and planning that Rob puts in with his experience is enormously vital and valuable for me personally. So he's doing a super job and the guys embrace what he does and the two groups together, they work well. Every year, the aim is to finish top four. That's been achieved at the moment, but there's still three games remaining. What would be the focus on the next three games? Well, hopefully restricting injuries to really none at all, if that's at all possible. That's number one priority. Number two, man managing the guys between now and obviously the finals, being able to get as many of our players, both seniors and development, in really good form. And it's a wonderful achievement by Greg Ryan too to get his boys to qualify for the finals as well because the format's changed this year. It's actually now a final four, not a final six. So the boys have done a wonderful job there and it's imperative that we have that internal pressure. Also too, just tinking around slightly with what we want to try and do to get the maximum benefit out of our structure. So we'll be hopefully planning as well as we possibly can between now and uh, our last game against North Ballarat and just really trying to drive home the fact that the guys need to be in really good form going into the finals. Well, we take on Casey this week. Despite some patchy form, they've got a few young Melbourne talented players running around for them. Yeah, they have, and I think the one that's been a catalyst for them too has been Max Gorn in the ruck. So, you know, his ability, I think, something like 80 hitouts there a couple of weeks ago, which was a VFL record. So, we're certainly from a ruck division coming up against some big boys. We had Curry yesterday, and obviously Hampson and Stevenson the week before against Richmond. So, our boys in and around the middle of the ground need to be at their very best. But look, young kids give you enthusiasm and exuberance and they just want to play. So we're once again got to be at our very best. We can't drop off and you talk about percentages and if you're just a little bit off your game, the opposition will make you pay. So we are back at home, which is always a positive for us. We've spent another two weeks on the road. So it's important, as I stress, that we just need to keep the momentum going forward. Now just quickly on the injury front, how are Fanning, Rowe, 
Scipione tracking with their injuries? Yeah, all pretty positive actually. I'd anticipate that Julian and Josh will be available for selection this week, so that gives us a little bit of a headache to determine what we need to do there. Shannon Lang pulled out on Saturday morning with just a bit of general back soreness, so he'll be available. Alex Brown hopefully will be available after uh, breaking his collarbone there a number of weeks ago. And I'd anticipate with uh, the way David's progressing that he should be available for, if not Northern Blues, certainly North Ballarat, I'd imagine. So if we can keep that group going forward with their match fitness, then hopefully it'll give us a lot of match committee headaches when we're uh, entering into the finals. Greg Ryan is doing a fantastic job with the development team. They also could get a top two finish. Yeah, well, in our situation, the development group's only got two more games because North Ballarat don't have a development team. So they certainly need to cash in on uh, a game against Casey and also to the Northern Blues and then see what happens in uh, the last round of the year. But again, Greg's done a wonderful job. He's got terrific respect from everybody here at the football club and, you know, from our point of view as a senior team, we unfortunately rape and pillage his best players every week and he's got to accommodate what the senior coach wants, but no, he's a terrific acquisition to the club, an asset to the club, and he's done a wonderful job since he's been in that role. And just finally, we noticed you in the commentary box on Saturday, <laughs> commentating on the ABC. How was your day out at Craigie Burn? Yeah, it was good actually. It wasn't windy out at Highgate, which is uh, always a bonus. and. To be able to work with ABC, who do a wonderful job promoting the VFL, is always an experience, and certainly the way the guys operate, it's a pretty professional outfit. And also, too, being able to have a bit of a look at Essendon and uh, Williamstown, both sides, certainly Williamstown's in the finals, and Essendon's trying to be thereabouts. So to have a look at the opposition firsthand is always a good thing, so you can always do a little bit of scouting for possibly the next time that you play either of those teams. Gary, thanks very much for joining us on another episode of Borough TV and good luck this week against... Casey. Casey. <laughs> Keep those hard-hitting questions coming, Cam. Good on you, mate. Borough TV is a Port Melbourne Football Club production.